actually happened. I'm heading to Fordham University in the Bronx to meet the Associate Director of the Urban so, Studies Program, Mark Nason. He explains how the historically middle-class Bronx was being transformed in the early 1970s. The Bronx in the 1940s and 50s was a suburb where a lot of upwardly mobile black and Latino families moved. Among these were jazz musicians, teachers, and postal workers. And for about 20 years, the Bronx was the most integrated community in the United States. Then a deterioration sets in. He tells me that the expressways across from 1520 Sedgwick are part of a network of superhighways built by urban planner Robert Moses. Those roads split long-standing neighborhoods, decreased property values, and accelerated the post-war flight of many white residents for the suburbs. At the same time manufacturing jobs were moving out of the Bronx, tens of thousands of mostly poor immigrants were moving in. The black and Puerto Rican population who's been there for 20 or 30 years who can't get out is now the dominant population, but there is a new immigration as a, a result of the 1965 immigration laws. A great many Jamaicans are moving to the Bronx. And this journal uh, points out in 1964, there are uh, 2,000 Jamaicans coming to the Bronx, and it goes up to 17,000 in 1967. And ironically, that is the year that Clive Campbell comes with his family to the Bronx. He says that Cool Herc was part of this influx of new faces, arriving just as the community was overrun by a heroin epidemic, gang violence, and arson. The Bronx is burning. You actually started seeing landlords burning their buildings to get insurance money. Now, what did that do then to the social dynamics of what was going on? It, it created this tremendous sense of fear that was compounded by a city fiscal crisis, which led to closing of schools, closing of firehouses, closing of police stations. Dr. Nason is also familiar with the story about 1520 being the birthplace of hip-hop. Herc's music fit the psychology and lived experience of young people growing up in the Bronx. And that was the Big Bang that started hip-hop. The sound created there, that pounding rhythm, um, was, is something that's still capturing the imagination of young people all over the world. I've, I've just come back from Berlin and Barcelona, where hip-hop is the vehicle of expression for so many young people, particularly their immigrants and their poor people. But Dr. Nason can't prove the party at 1520 Sedgwick did happen. And like Curtis, he knows that hip-hop culture is more than just DJing. 